Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Bresch, I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma that should come out soon. Hopefully, one day. <laughs> if you want to wishlist that game, click the link in the description. And hey, if you want a free copy of Pinstripe, which was featured by Time Magazine and Rolling Stone, ooh, ah, click the link in the description, you get a free copy on Patreon. Well, that's not really free, is it? Anyway, support this channel, it would mean a lot to me. Play my game, Pinstripe. Alright, so, here's the thing. I've been learning modeling for th <clears throat> three, <coughs> excuse me, I've been learning modeling for three months, and the hardest part by far for me has been UV unwrapping and texturing. Rigging is a little bit complicated too, but UV unwrapping is a little weird, and there's plenty of concepts on YouTube and tutorials and whatnot that kind of make it even more confusing. Well, I want to give you the basics, I want to distill it down for you, so that you can get it done and move on with finishing your game. So let's not get too complicated, let's just jump into Blender and get started. But first, before we get started guys, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible website for you guys to learn about pretty much anything you wanna learn about. Specifically, if you wanna learn about game design, it's an incredible place. Whether it's audio design for your games, or 2D illustration, or animation, or Unreal, coding, storytelling, marketing, business, management, Whatever it is you need to learn about game development, it's on Skillshare. One of my favorite courses is by Rusty Smith, and it just covers Unity basics. The coolest part about this ad read is, hey, get two free months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. You really can't beat that, guys. Give it a shot, see what happens. I love Skillshare, it's a great way to learn about game development. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so here's a head crab. Um, in order to texture paint this, we have to do something called UV unwrapping. And this this part of 3D modeling was probably the most, I don't know, it just seemed very intimidating, but it's actually really fun, really easy. Um, and so I wanna show you the basics of that really quickly here. So if we were to skin this head crab, how would we skin it? Meaning, if we were to take his skin off, and this, uh, this sounds disgusting, but if we were to take the skin off and lay it flat on a table so that we could paint on his skin, how would we cut it? What would we do? Well, basically we need to mark areas on this model of where we want to cut the skin. So if we were to take, for example, this leg, if we wanted to paint this leg on a flat surface, Take that skin, put it on a flat surface. Where would we cut? Well, we'd want to cut here. So let's select that edge loop, holding Alt and clicking. And then you do Edge, Mark Seam. And so now you can see there's a red cut. So imagine getting scissors and cutting that right there. Now, if we were to pull that skin off, this is disgusting, but if we were to pull that skin off, it wouldn't lay flat, would it? It would still be a kind of tube and if we tried to lay it flat, we could never fully see the entire thing because it's all connected in this cylindrical pointed shape. So what we would need to do is actually mark a cut down the center here. Now the reason we're not gonna choose it up at the top here is because we want it to be in an area where the player can't see that there is a seam. And that'll, that'll definitely make sense when we start doing the um, illustration. So let's, um, or the texturing. All right, let's mark that as well, mark seam. And as you can see guys, we don't need to worry about the other side of this mirror. All we have to worry about is this right side. So there is our seam. So now if you can imagine, if we were to cut this skin and then cut around this circle here, you could actually unfold it and it would create a triangle. And let me show you how that looks. Let's select everything by pressing A and then hit U and click unwrap. And what that's gonna do if we go to our UV editing panel, you can see we've got a big mess here, but this right here is the leg. We have the cuts that occurred here and then also the cut that occurred here. All right, so we actually need to unwrap this as well. If we want to be able to paint this, um, we're like for example, these teeth here, we have very little control over how those teeth look. 
because they're sort of crammed flat. Again, imagine the skin being ripped off this head crab and just being flattened on a surface. We really don't have a lot of control. So when you're choosing things and choosing areas to mark seams, just think about the areas that you want a lot of control over. Those teeth are really important. So how do we get control over painting those teeth? Well, let's just cut them out just like we did with the arm. So we're gonna select an edge loop just like that. And let's select an edge loop for every single tooth, just like so. Let's go to edge, mark seam. And again, it's not enough yet because there's still cylinders and you can't really flatten the cylinder until you cut it down the center. So we're gonna go at the bottom of the teeth and we're just gonna select these edges holding shift and just selecting our edges, edge, mark seam, just like that. Okay, so those will um, UV unwrap pretty cool. And I also wanna have control over the gums as well. And the reason I want control over the gums is because there's a lot of detail there and I hate seeing a lot of detail in my UV unwrap next to areas that are big like this body. So I wanna actually cut those out as well. It's kind of just a tick I've got um, when it comes to UV unwrapping. So I'm gonna unwrap the gums as well, and I'll show you how that looks when we go to our UV editing panel. All right, so there are our gums, and we don't need to select anything here because that's just the mirror line. So if we mark the seam here, just imagine this red line is actually just gonna continue over. All right, so let me show you how that looks. Let's hit A unwrap and then go to our UV editing panel. So there are our gums as you can see. So now we have a little bit more control of how our gums look. There are our teeth and there's a tooth over here so it kind of just sort of randomly placed them across um, our UV unwrap. That's totally fine and I'll explain what all of this is exactly in a bit but let's finish really quickly let's finish um, marking our seams. So let's mark this just like we did with the teeth and also the other foot. And again, we want to go down the center line here. Now, because this foot ends in a cylinder shape, or a, it's really an end gone, um, we can just mark that as well. So that's going to cut out and create its own little circle. Um, so that'll cut down the center and unwrap just fine. We also want to do the mouth. I want a lot of control over this mouth area, so let's just mark a seam here as well. And guys, there's really no wrong way. Um, I mean, there's <laughs> there are there are wrong ways to mark seams, but there are a lot of right ways to mark your seams, if that makes sense. So don't get too nervous about exactly what you should do. Now, I also want control over the top because this is a really interesting spherical shape that sort of goes inward. I want control over what happens at the bottom here. So let's actually select this as well. And again, guys, we're just selecting where a knife would cut if we were to skin this head crab. I know that's a gross way to think of it, but it's definitely beneficial to think of your, creating your characters like that. All right, so go to edge, mark seam here as well. Now, let me show you guys something. If I click A and then unwrap, here is the final UV edit. It's actually not bad. It could be better, but I think that this is definitely going to get the job done. Now, this the way that you need to think about this is this is exactly how my table would look. If I was in a hunting lodge and I was hunting head crab and I was skinning my head crab and I laid out the skins and cut them, this is exactly what it would look like. We've got the top head portion, we've got his leg, and if we click this button here, UV sync selection, what it's gonna do is if I select something over here, it's going to select it on my model as well over here. So you can see we've selected this line here. So you can see where you're, what you're actually selecting. So that's our front leg here, our body. This is the lower half. This is the interior mouth underneath. These are the teeth, the gums, and that's that the bottom paw of this over here, which I don't really care about. And this is that leg, okay? Now let me show you another way to unwrap that you're probably never going to use unless you are in a hurry. Um, but what a lot of people will tell you to do is just click A, 
or press A, then U, and then do Smart UV Project. And what it's going to try to do is unwrap it based on, you know, what it thinks it should do. So that's what happened. <laughs> and I'm not sure, you guys can correct me in the comments, but I'm not sure if it's actually taking into account any of the seams at this point. So that's what Blender thinks is a smart move. That is a nightmare. So <laughs> you, can, you can try and avoid using seams all day, but uh, I think the smartest move is just to think about if you were hunting head crab, how would you skin the head crab so that all the skin would lay flat. So let's just redo the unwrap. Let's go to A, select all, then U, and then unwrap. Okay, there is our unwrap. That looks great. Now, I think, you know, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to worry too much about um, aligning things cleanly, but I do. what I do want to do is, let's get the teeth. First off, if you want to select something and move it around, you'll notice that sometimes it selects edges and you're like, what's going on? It's because we have this UV sync selection. So if I'm selecting certain parts of this that are connected to other things over here, it's going to connect to over here. So turn that off. That's kind of confusing, but that's the best way I can describe it. Just turn it off. If you ever want to start editing your UV over here, um, just turn off UV sync selection and then press A and it'll select everything. All right, so now we can start moving things around. Now, if I move these teeth, let's select all of these teeth here. Um, if I move these, it's not moving anything in the model, guys. It's actually just moving our map. So I could scale this up like crazy. Nothing's gonna happen over here, right? This is just a map. This is telling um, our texturing editor program. In this case, we're just gonna use Photoshop. It's telling us where we can actually paint. Um, so once you start moving this around, don't really think of it as skins. Think of it as a map, because um, that's exactly what it is. It's just a map. And it will make sense once, once we start texturing in Photoshop. The scale is how much resolution you want. So if I made these teeth huge, that gives me a ton of room uh, to illustrate fine details, like a cavity on this tooth. But we don't want that. Our teeth, everything pretty much needs to be relative to the size of the actual model. So I don't really need to edit a lot here. Um, I don't really care about this foot here. So I'm just gonna make it really tiny and stick it over here because you're never gonna see that. Um, the things that do matter are the, the legs are really important to me. I want those to look super shiny and creepy. So we can select all of the vertices for this leg here. And obviously there's different ways to select things. I'm not too worried about selecting things with the right techniques. Um, but if you have some suggestions, leave them in the comments. Okay, so there, I want to sort of have my, my leg pointed downward. I don't know why, I just want it to be. But everything else looks pretty good. Maybe we can move this over just a little bit. Um, but if you were making a game that it was super important to save in your memory, um, and you wanted a really small image with the highest resolution possible, you would cram everything really tight inside of this um, this square here. But I'm not too worried about our resolution or saving in memory. And, and what you might learn when you're making games is memory is not super important if you're making a Steam game. Now if we're making like a Nintendo Switch game, yeah, you need to be, you need to be pretty careful. Um, but this looks great, all right? I don't have any real qualms with this. I don't really like where these gums are, so let's move the gums over Maybe right here. I'm trying to space things out so I have some room in Photoshop. Okay, so we're gonna export this UV for Photoshop. And it will make sense. If it doesn't make sense right now, don't worry. Once you see me actually working with it, it's gonna make a lot of sense. So let's save everything out. Let's make sure I'm still recording in OBS. I am. And what we're gonna do is go to UV, export UV layout, and I have this mess folder here. Um, let's see here. Let's go to, actually, let's save it inside of our Unity folder because I'm actually going to edit the texture in Photoshop and then see the changes in Unity. 
And I know that's a little bit unorthodox, but that's definitely the way that I like to do it. So what we're going to do is let's go to our, uh, where are we? Go to our models. Our head crab is in here somewhere. Yep, he is. And what we're going to do is we're just going to save this head crab uv.png here. Actually, yeah, that's fine. Export. Okay. So I'm going to open up Unity, and while I wait for it, I'm going to also open up Photoshop. Now, we're going to open up this PNG inside of Photoshop, and then what we're also going to do is save it out as a PSD. I work with PSDs all the time. I never really export anything out as a PNG. You don't really need to do that anymore with Unity or Blender, because both softwares will take PSD files just fine, and they'll actually convert them inside the editor, so you don't really need to export it as a PNG every single time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to let's load up our project inside of Unity and I've got some playground I call them playgrounds just air, uh, projects that I can sort of mess around in. So there's playground 7 we're going to open that one up and then we're also going to open up our head crab uh, image that we just exported. Alright so we've got the head crab UV PNG opened up here in Photoshop and we're just gonna actually save this I should have done this earlier but we're gonna save it actually as a PSD right now inside of the same folder that it's in so if we go to our playground 7 folder assets it's kind of a mess in this folder but we're just gonna name this head crab uh, UV PSD. Save that out and let's go ahead and jump inside of Unity. Um, and I have a playground scene here um, that we can just go ahead and add our head crab to. So let's just zoom into about right here. And let's add in that head crab. So if we type in head crab, you'll notice that we already have our head crab saved inside of our Unity folder. I believe this is the right one. Let's double check. Let's file. Oh, it's not. Let's see here. Headcrab r2.blend. I see, I see. Okay, we need to save it in our models folder. So let's just save it in headcrab or in our uh, playground 7 folder. There we go. Go to assets, then our models. There we go. Headcrab r2. And that's just revision 2 because my first one sucked. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now we're inside of Unity. You'll notice that the um, model appears in our folder now, and you don't have to really export it as anything else. Um, it's going to be perfectly fine if you just drag it in as a Blender file. Unity sort of knows what to do with it. Um, you'll notice that it also brings in our light source and our camera, so we're gonna actually delete those. So let's delete the camera. Hold on one sec here. Delete the camera and the light. All right, so now it's just this. Originally it was a sphere, so that's what it's called. It's called a sphere. All right, so save that out. And if we go into Unity, the light and the camera will delete. Um, for some reason it rotated weird. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we now have our head crab. And what I'm going to do is now we can start editing the UV in Photoshop. So you'll see here that the head crab UV Photoshop file is also appearing um, when we search head crab and that's great. So we can see, go ahead and create a new material. Now in this case it's called no name. Um, that's fine. We can rename that. The, the way that we can edit this material is just go to extract materials and just extract it out in the same folder that it's in. So now if we click on our model no name one, let's call this head crab R2. Okay, so that's called head crab R2 and it's attached to our mesh renderer. And the final thing we want to do is in the albedo section, we want to actually add in our new head crab PSD that we just created. So head crab UV, drag that to our albedo, and you can see it's actually mapping perfectly to our head crab. Let's shrink the size of this a little bit here. So that looks great. And the reason that looks great is because you can see the lines, we can actually disable the lines in Photoshop. If we disable the lines, then they're going to disappear and it's going to be nothing. 
but the lines are showing up because they're right here and it's mapping perfectly to everything and that looks great there's no weird artifacts or anything like that so now we can go ahead and start illustrating our head crab so let's go ahead and do that let's turn on our lighting hold on one sec here there we go there we go our lighting and also our image effects so we can see how it looks in game now again guys there's plenty of ways that you can you can um, illustrate your textures for your game you can do it inside of blender you can do it in substance painter I really like to do it just in Photoshop because that's that's my forte that's where I did all my 2d games so I just do it inside of Photoshop and I'm gonna show you some techniques and why I do it in Photoshop as you can see I'm not sure you can tell from the screenshot currently but the game that I'm working on is actually very stylized um, it kinda has that firewatch feel and so doing your illustrations in Photoshop can really be a beneficial thing to do for this kind of game so let's go ahead and just start illustrating our character so we're gonna start with pink and I'm switched to if you were wondering what all that banging was I've switched to a Wacom um, Intuos pen tablet because um, it's just a little bit easier to illustrate so there is our pink colored head crab and we're gonna bring down this significantly just so we could see it so as you can tell guys these lines they're just here to help us um, know where to draw that's all it is and I was supposed to X inside of blender you can actually tell when you're exporting the UV you can say hey I don't want it to fill in so I forgot to do that but I'm just gonna delete it so now we don't have a fill all we have are these lines hit save and now let's go ahead guys and start creating that red bloody sort of color at the tips of his teeth and his legs if we jump into our browser here we can actually just type in head crab <clears throat> let's close out all these tabs here sorry all right all right I really like this one I think that's what we want to make it look like so it's got like a black leathery look for his legs so let's do that um, and also this pink should be a little bit more desaturated and maybe a little bit more yellow there we go hit save and then what we're gonna do is just start creating the illustrations so this is called bleed um, by the way guys I come from a, a sort of packaging science background my degree was called graphic communications and it dealt primarily with packaging and um, design graphic design for packaging and it's very strange it's a little serendipitous how similar both of these are I'm essentially illustrating a package design that's a really good way to think about this if it was laid out flat how would you illustrate it so we're gonna go black <coughs> excuse me guys I got a frog in my throat got a head crab in my throat alright so if we just start illustrating you can see that things are starting to work out so his the tips of his legs are a little bit black let's go a little bit darker here something like that yeah that's creepy looking now one of the things I want to do before I start uh, or before I continue illustrating is I want to show you what uh, how important it is to figure out your shaders before you do your texturing for those of you who don't know a material is a combination of shading and texturing right so we need to figure out how the shading looks before we figure out how we want our texture to look at least in my case I think that's the smartest direction to go well I know we're gonna use Tuni Colors Pro which is an asset on Unity's asset store this is basically a shader that <coughs> excuse me guys this is basically a shader that allows it to look kinda like that breath of the wild feel um, it kinda has a a toony look to it but it also has a lot of detail as well so we're gonna use the desktop version so there is our tune shade and let's just start editing it a little bit here so let's go to the ramp threshold to be very flat so this is ramp smoothing you can see that it smooths out I actually want it to be pretty hard edges so like that see how that looks a lot like breath of the wild right there there's not a lot of smoothing going on it's very hard um, and then also let's turn on some specular a cartoon specular specular is basically gonna make it look shiny turn off the smoothness for, smoothness for that and we can scale it up a little bit pretty big here make it white yep just like that and let's actually make the color dark there we go 
So if we make the color dark, then that shine will, will really appear. So now it looks like it's much shinier, which is great. Let's bring down that sh the shine though just a little bit. That's a little too much. That looks great. And then finally, guys, if you notice in a lot of Breath of the Wild games, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in, in the Breath of the Wild game, you'll notice there's a lot of rim light going on. What a rim light is, is it's just an artificial rim light that's always appearing on the edges of the character. We can actually turn that on in our Tuni Colors Pro 2 Inspector. So let's go to Rim and go to Lighting. Very good. And if we put these two sliders really close to each other, there we go. You get a really hard lined rim light. And then the final thing we want to do, guys, is let's just turn on a bump map. So fortunately, I already have a bump map. It's called Skin. I believe I do. I thought I did. I don't have a bump map or a normal map. So let's just Google skin normal map, right? And obviously don't do this for your commercial game, guys, but if you're just practicing, it's totally fine to do it this way. So I really like, let's see here. I really like this one. So let's save that in our models folder. And I, I like to save my textures in my models folder because they're so closely aligned. Um, uh, I know that's probably not industry standard, but models typically bring over from Blender their textures and materials. So to me, it just makes sense to just put them all in one folder. All right, this is gonna be skin normal map. Cool. And let's just add that in. Skin, there it is. There is our normal map. That is a wrinkly looking head crab. So let's open that up inside of Photoshop and blur it just a little bit because it's a little too detailed to be honest. Save it. And when we blur it, um, it makes it look a little bit more toony. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe not so much. There we go. How's that? Save it out. Very good. Okay, cool. And you know, it's a little intense. Um, I wonder if we could get rid of the uh, some of that shadow. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, now we can start texturing our head crab. So you can see the normal maps and just the shader itself made a huge difference, and we didn't even do any texturing at all. The only thing we textured was these black legs here. So let's go back to our head crab and figure out what else we need to do. Well, we also have the... Um, the hind legs black and then we also have some blood on the fingers here and I want to show you why we're in Photoshop um, with a few techniques so there's this here where is his hind leg there it is right here so let's make that black as well and I apologize if you can't see it clearly I'll, I'll make it a little bit more there we go all right let's make those teeth bloody <clears throat> let's go to blood splatter PNG images so I typically do a lot of Google searching while I'm doing modeling um, and the reason why is because um, it's a lot it, I think it's a much better philosophy to um, get something looking good uh, by just Google imaging things do it quick come on Thomas save images there we go get things looking good um, we're going to save that in our downloads. There we go. And the way that you can get things looking good is by Googling uh, images and just placing them into your uh, UV. Once you figure out how it looks and how if you like how it looks, then you can go in and do an original design. Um, but this is really important, I think. Just get a reference image. Get things looking good really quickly um, by just taking other other content and putting it in your game. And just remember what you've actually stolen <laughs> so that you can go and go in and, and and make it your own when you're when you're ready okay um, so I'm highly I'm not recommending stealing I'm recommending uh, using images as references for um, the production the early production of your game so you can get an idea of what it looks like all right <clears throat> And you'll, you'll hear about this in the film industry as well. Sometimes people just take soundtracks from other movies and just stick them in their edit just to see how it looks and how it feels. All right, so let's save the blood here. Very good. Maybe a little bit more. Looking good so far. All right.
right, I can just go ahead and just take that. There we go. Let's get a little bit more. Maybe just like that. Good. A little bit more up like that. And again, guys, just make sure you're you're cutting things out from um, so they're not interfering with other portions of the map, right? And as you can see, I'll actually zoom in for you <clears throat> on the model. You can see why we chose to do a seam on the back side of the teeth. Watch this. If we zoom around, look, we're actually getting a split here. See that? It's not seamless. But that's okay because the player is rarely ever going to see the back of the teeth. All right. So let's keep designing. So nice bloody teeth. I like it. Looks good. And uh, maybe some shading at the top of the teeth, like so. And I'm going to show you guys one of my special techniques that I do for all of my games, um, even 2D games. That looks good. So what I like to do is I actually like to add sort of fake highlights to things um, to give it a feeling of being um, highly illustrated um, and not just you know realistic textures but more of a stylized look so what I can do is actually if I've got a shade here going down that way I can actually add in watch this this is gonna be really fun actually I can actually add in shade at the gums here so first thing we want to do is let's just make sure these gums are basically black so this is one portion of the gums that I want to control over so now they're black and for this, what I'm going to do is actually, let's see here, how does this work? I think I got it figured out. So we're going to have a black shading here. It's going to be a gradient. So you can see why I'm using Photoshop right now, because I want to be able to use this line tool. And I don't believe a line tool exists in Blender or in Substance Painter. I'm probably wrong, but just go with me. All right, so we're actually going to illustrate on top of the various um, triangles here to get a sort of a fake shade look. So maybe something like that. Let's see how that looks in here. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. And then we can actually add in, <coughs> excuse me, a white highlight. Um, so first off, let's actually, yeah, let's delete this. So if the lighting is coming from the left side, then we want to make sure that there's not, this would be white, right? And this here, this would actually be black. There we go. There we go. Okay, something like that. And this would be white as well, so we're going to delete this. And this will make sense, I promise. But this stylized look is <clears throat> can really make your game um, pop. And while we're illustrating this, I want, to, I want to give you a philosophy that I have. There's no reason to compete with AAA games, okay? Don't try and make your game look realistic. If you're an indie dev, do not try and make your game look realistic. Um, unless that's your forte and you're really good at that and you can do it on the cheap, okay, that's great. But if not, um, if it, like most people, it's, it's very hard to compete with AAA games in their style then I would recommend you go with a stylized look that makes you stand out on the cheap, right? So let's go to overlay here. And I didn't do it, did it? Okay, good. All right, so we've got a stylized look for the teeth here. That normal map is a little bit messy, isn't it? I don't really like it, to be honest with you. Let's turn that off for now. Okay, I want to turn that off for now. All right, let's go ahead and make some uh, much longer teeth. So now we have this, and so what we can do is actually just go a little bit higher. So make it look like the teeth are sort of extending up his face, right? That's really creepy. So let's go ahead, and I like to follow the contours of these lines. That's why it's really important to have this map inside of Photoshop so that you can follow the contours. Otherwise, it looks really weird. So there we go, and then one more here. Good. 
And these are just going to be the black shadows. Ooh, nice. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Save that out. Cool. All right. And what we're going to do is go ahead and add in another right here. There we go. So this is going to be a much darker shadow right here. Awesome. See that, guys? See how we're slowly getting this sort of stylized look, and it almost looks 3D. Um, I love it. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, I wonder if we could add in... I think we need a little bit of a shadow right there as well. So let's do that. My tummy's growling. Sorry. If you hear, if you hear my tummy growling <laughs> in this video, I apologize. I ate before I started this video, but apparently I didn't eat enough. All right. So let's add a shadow right here. Some of you are thinking, Thomas, why are you spending so much time on this part of the model? And it's because this part of the model is the most terrifying part. This is the part of the model that's gonna jump at your face. <laughs> so you definitely want it to be frightening. And then let's add a, a sort of red rash. And you see this in a lot of the Half-Life games, and I've definitely taken inspiration from this. Just adding a red rash to things is just really creepy. Um, so something like, ooh, that's a little much. Um, <laughs> something like, uh, how's this? There we go. Pretty cool. We could probably add the rash to his entire base. That sounds weird. Add it to the base here, there we go. And then just decrease the opacity. What's going on there? Okay, cool. And, you know, we can blend it. We don't need it right there for now. Um, and then we don't need one there as well. You don't want it bleeding into the other parts of the, the UV map. Cool. There we go. And I wonder if we could get these black portions to, to look a little bit red. I think what we could do, guys, is actually go to Colorize. So Hue, Saturation, Modifier, or Effect, and then do Colorize, Saturation, Red, and then go a little bit more. There we go. Something like that. Save it. There we go. Now it looks a little bit more uniform. Um, that right there is looking weird. I'm going to delete that. Yeah, we don't need that. That's actually going to be... You just do Overlay. And, hold on. Soft light will decrease the opacity. There we go. Okay. And then finally, let's delete our or remove our UV map. So far, things are looking pretty good. Let's add some uh, sunspots to his body. I think that'll make him look really creepy. But we're almost done, at least with the top half portion. So because this game is toony, I don't want to add too much texture. What we could do is add, if you take a look at this, what you could do is you could go to, you know, um, you could type in dirt text, or uh, how about paper texture? You could add a sort of crinkled old rustic paper to this entire thing. Let me show you that. If you were making a more realistic game, I think that would be, you know, reasonable. Something like this. So now we have more texture added to him, which quite honestly doesn't look bad. I think I'm going to keep it. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. We could probably do an overlay though. Here we go. Save that out. That looks a little bit better. Yeah. So we got some textures in the uh, the joints and the red areas, which looks really cool. So as you can see, guys, it's really important to keep this. UV map available at all times because we're going to need to go back to it. Um, so now let's go ahead and do the mouth portion. So what I want to do is actually go pretty much black here, just like that, and then red on the lips here. Here, there we go. So 
So we have some red here, some black there. Save that and then go underneath. Very good, very good. That is pretty horrifying. And then let's add in a red rim around this portion here and you can see why I separated the two now. Um, so what I want to do is just select everything here and what we're going to do is add in a red, shiny red <clears throat> lip here. Let's bring our UV map on top of everything. It's a little much. You can't really see the edges very well, can you? What you could do is decrease the opacity. And then you could add in a faux shine to this edge lip or this lip edge. There we go. Just like this. And then go to white. And this will make it look like it's <clears throat> a shiny little edge. There we go. See that? Got a faux shine around the lips. And that makes it feel a little bit more, uh, makes it stand out a little bit more. And then guys, again, just like we did with the, the teeth, you can start adding in sort of a fake teeth edge by just following the contours. As long as your contours and your uh, edges are in sort of a uniform placement, we can start adding in these ridges here. Now the way you can do this with skin <clears throat> is do one side very bright white and then the other side very dark. You'll notice this a lot in, if you just Look at the real world, like for example, look at your hand right now. You see the wrinkles at your knuckle? There's a white highlight, and then there's a very dark highlight right next to it. That's how you accomplish a crease look. And I'll show you in just a second here how we're gonna do that. Very good. Now this isn't, you know, real world lighting, so it's not actually real, um, but it tricks the mind. And that's what making games is all about, right? So there's one <coughs> set of creases, just like that. And then we're just gonna do another set <coughs> over here. So again, we're creating creases on the opposite side. And this is going to be the shadow portion of our creases. It's gonna make it look pretty disgusting. I'm not gonna lie. But I love doing stuff like this. I think this is um, this is one of Half Life's and also games like Bioshock, um, their forte, making things look really organic. And when you have something organic like this next to technology, um, like alien alien uh, crafts and weapons, it's a, such a strange feeling. All right, so we're almost done with these creases. One more, my hand's starting to get cramped. And just <clears throat> stick those in. Ooh, that's gross looking. Okay, uh, let's do an overlay. Save it. Ooh, that is frightening. I love that. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, um, what's going on here? Let's turn off this. Very good, very good. Okay, um, the last thing I wanna do, guys, is I wanna start adding some wrinkles on the legs as well. So let's do this same kind of logic. Remember, highlights right next to lowlights. Use that logic on the legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this here, we're gonna just follow the contours of that leg. Doesn't have to be perfect, because this is about 1024 by, by 1024, so we have no, that it's not super detailed to begin with. And we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do this. Actually, let's make that, this a separate layer here. Because I believe the black we're gonna do overlay. There we go, save that out. There he is. So yeah, this cool looking shadow here. Actually, you know what? I think we need to flip that. Let's flip it. Transform, flip, horizontal. Oops. Ah, what the heck. 
I'll do overlay. Yeah, there we go. Transform, flip horizontal. Oops, vertical. And then we're going to do an arch <laughs> because I'm lazy. Warp arc. And it's just going <laughs> to, there we go. Sort of flip it. Don't do this in real life, guys. That's terrible uh, design. But I think that gets the point across right there. And you can also add a little bit more as well. So remember, highlights next, next to low lights causes things to look like a crease. So like that, overlay, let's do two of those. We're getting there, we're getting there. Maybe two more. There we go. See that? Now we have a crease look. I love it. Ooh, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Um, maybe a shade right there as well. So let's do that. Let's do a dark shade right here. So I'm just sort of going off my instincts at this point. Um, sometimes I listen to my uh, instincts more than what's logical, and it usually works itself out. That looks pretty good. I feel like we need a little um, highlight there as well. So let's put one there. Could be we actually need a shadow there. Let's do that. Yep. Use your instincts, Thomas. Save that. I was correcto. Very nice. Um, awesome. And let's do the same with the with the back legs right here. So that crease right there, let's see here. It would be up here, just like this. And create a new layer. There we go. And we'll do an overlay. Yep, and just, yep, there we go. Save it. Save it. Ooh, that's so gross. Um, nice little crease there, looks pretty good. And honestly, I think we need a crease of darkness on that side as well. So that would be right here, guys. Very good. So I just do a crease there, maybe get rid of that. There we go. And then overlay. Save it. Good. Make it a little less. There we go. Okay. Nice crease on the legs there. Um, and then finally, I think we could do a crease right here as well. So we would do a highlight and a low light. So that would be just like this here, but over on the creases here. So let's zoom in. And then we're gonna do a highlight right here. Well, it's, in reality, it's actually going to be a low light. <clears throat> there we go. Overlay. When you overlay a red, uh, um, a black on top of a pink, and then do like three layers of it, it makes it look like it's burned. It almost looks like a rash. So I, I do that a lot with my enemies, and that's that's inspired by Half Life. They do a really good job of that. All right, and then just a highlight here. Save that out. Very good, ooh, that is spooky. I feel like we need to do that right there. Let's flip that, let's do, this will be a invert. There we go. Ah, yes, much better. Those are some some strong looking legs, bud. All right, um, oh, we need to do some uh, red creases right here as well. So let's do that. This will be, again, same logic applies here. I'm getting lazy right now. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, pretty good. I think, I think that's wrong. Hmm. I feel like this needs to be black. Let's try that. Invert, save, yes. Yes, sir, that's exactly right. Um, maybe bring the shading like so, there we go. And then we're gonna do an overlay effect. Yeah, overlay, 
and then just duplicate it like crazy. There we go. Save. Ah, I love it. I love that. That is so gross. Um, <laughs> let's add some little warts and sunspots to our creature. Um, those teeth probably need to be black, to be honest, as well. So let's do sunspots and just darken those teeth. Um, I think I want them to match our, uh, there we go, our legs. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's so gross. That is so nasty. And that is the goal, right? All right, let's add in our sunspots. Make him look like an old curmudgeon. So add in a sunspot here. And then one, maybe a big one. A couple big ones here. Just a slight pulse. Good, overlay. Save. There we go. That's a beautiful looking head crab, guys. And then turn off our UV. And there he is. I think our head crab looks pretty awesome. Now, if we want to see this <coughs> inside of, sorry, inside of Blender, um, we could go to UV editing, open, and then, um, where is it? Head crab UV PSD. You can open it up. And then you should be able to see, um, actually you have to do it here. I'm not even gonna try. Why, why isn't it working? Someone tell me in the comments why it's not working. Um, but anyway, actually, yeah, you need to add a material. Uh, and then you can add in your image, texture, open it up, headcrabuv.psd, open, and there he is. So you can have your head crab you know, have its texture inside of Photoshop as well if you want. Um, I just found it. I like to do it inside of Unity because that's that's the end result. Um, so it looks way better in Unity because we have that shader, um, that tune shader, which obviously you could do that in Blender as well. But if we go to, let's take our head crab and let's copy him and let's paste him all the way over where our player is. Um, where is our player? Our player, I think he's way over on the dock over here. So let's actually just move this over here. And you guys are getting a nice little sneak peek into my next game. This isn't really a playground. This is my next game. And then I can just uh, scale him down. But I'm obviously not going to be putting a head crab in my next game. That would be theft. Um, <laughs> so here's our head crab and let's go ahead and jump into play mode where is my there I am let's hit play make sure everything is muted there we go and we can take a look at our head crab in game so there is our little head crab right get rid of these boxes <laughs> so there's our head crab I like him he looks he, he's a little cutie He's a cutie. Um, all right, that's it, guys. Those are texturing basics for Blender. <laughs>